Tonight, we continue our coverage of September 11th, 20 years later. Shortly after those two planes hit the World Trade Center that day, Cleveland office workers flooded into downtown streets. Mark Namick, who was covering the events that day, looks back at what sparked the panic and how the city and safety officials responded. Though 460 miles from the terrorist attacks unfolding in New York City, oh my God. Cleveland much closer to potential tragedy than most cities. Morning, Cleveland. It's United 93 with your 350. Uh, some lights up here at 35. Any ride reports? Just west of Cleveland, the United flight would soon be hijacked. United 93 at the Air Cleveland Center, I doubt, please. No one knew where it was going to come down, and people often forget the largest building between Chicago and New York City is right on Public Square. Marty Flask, chief security manager at Hopkins International Airport on September 11th, recalls the confusion and panic as U.S. flights were grounded and airports closed. We had passengers who were intending to go to California or Chicago. Their aircraft was landing here in the city of Cleveland. We had confusion here in our roadways. And I remember passengers pulling their suitcases on wheels up Route 237 because that's the only way they could leave the airport. His boss, Mayor Michael R. White, was pulled out of a cabinet meeting to respond to the news. Well, all we knew was there's this plane that's been hijacked. It's in our airspace. It looks like it's headed for downtown Cleveland. So with that a small amount of, of information, the goal was to get as many people out of what could be ground zero. Downtown was no different. We had traffic jams. Police were out there doing what they could do. We actually turned Euclid and Carnegie into outbound streets on all lanes. Uh, we tried to give them as much information as we had and we could. We told them as much as we could about our plan for safeguarding. In Lorain County, controllers at the Cleveland Air Route Traffic Control Center in Oberlin were tracking United Flight 93. United 93, Cleveland, if you hear the center right then. On the ground there, Tom Kelly, director of the Lorain County Emergency Management Agency, was dealing with an unnerved public. I started getting calls from school superintendents that said that they were getting a run from parents who were coming to get their kids. Kelly also paying attention to Cleveland. The traffic coming westbound on 90 was bumper to bumper. As Lorain and Cleveland officials focused on helping people get home, United Flight 93, now headed east, crashed in a Pennsylvania field after passengers stormed the cockpit to prevent the hijackers from hitting another target. We're likely that United is down. We've got a report from a guy at 24 of a cloud of black smoke off his lap. The attacks on the Twin Towers, the Pentagon, and on United Flight 93 forever altered how Americans live. The immediate aftermath, disorienting to many. The world changed. You know, our airport security was enhanced. We had armed National Guard with M16 rifles at the checkpoints. It was a trying time, and it was a solemn time. We went from having shelter for tornadoes and, and floods and snowstorms and that type of thing. Now we're working on uh, terrorism attacks, um, anthrax attacks. The white powder kicked up after that. Nearly 3,000 people died in the attacks on September 11th, including 441 first responders, most of them firefighters. Losses still shaping lives two decades later. It definitely is something that I think sticks with every firefighter, that every firefighter ha always, you know, always has that in the back of their mind. Emmett O'Connor, a second-generation firefighter, working just his second shift with the Elyria Fire Department. I just had admiration, admiration for those people who went in knowing there's a good chance that they weren't, they weren't coming back. Mark Namick, 3 News.